Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to your Daily Five for October 13th, 2023. It's Friday the 13th. Tomorrow, October 14th, there is a nearly total eclipse of the sun. What a time to be alive. Joe Duarte from Joe Duarte and the MoneyOptions.com, author of the number one best-selling options trading for dummies. Also, if you like what you see here, please consider a subscription to my website, Joe Duarte and the MoneyOptions.com. Let's get started. Today, we're talking about finding and trading the perfect price chart. I know the market's a little bit volatile right now, but investors that are in this for the long term should focus on what to look for when things get better. So today, I'm going to focus on finding that perfect setup in a technical uh, definition uh, and 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 see what we can do with it for when time, uh, times improve. So the goals are, uh, number one, uh, you want to define that market trend and trade with it. Number two, you want to find that perfect price chart. Number three, you want to have some preset ideas as to how to trade that perfect chart. So the first thing you want to do is look at the basic market trend. Uh, and of course, if we look at market breadth, look at major indices, look at the uh, sector uh, status and uh, what's going on inside the sectors. Now, I don't want to focus today on what's happening in the current market, which is a little bit choppy. And you can see that here. I want to focus on what happened last year in 2022 as we had a perfect setup, uh, which led us to find a lot of perfect charts. And so I'm focusing on what happened last year and want to project that toward the future. So quick look here, what was going on back then. You can see that the market was um, uh, pretty choppy, but was starting to make a bottom. You could see here that the volatility index was uh, starting to fall. That meant that uh, the uh, bearish sentiment was uh, starting to um, fade. And you can see that when uh, bearish sentiment fades, uh, prices start looking like they want to rise. And of course, you always want to look at what's going on with the RSI. And uh, when RSI is oversold, as it was here, right around 30, you kind of get an idea that uh, good things are starting to happen as the bears start to back off. You can see that in the VIX. And if you want to look at flash forward to the future, you can see that some of that is starting to go on now. You can see that VIX is starting to... Um, uh, roll over, and it really hasn't made it above 20, which is actually a bull bullish thing because if a move above 20 in this scenario would probably be very negative. So that's the big picture with market breadth. Now let's look a little bit more in depth at what was going on last year uh, in the S&P 500. I want to focus on these big volume by price bars here uh, and their relationship to the 200-day moving average and the 50-day moving average. That's a big cluster of volume by price bars. That's a lot of money that's going in and out of stocks. 200-day moving average, 50-day moving average, big support levels. So what happens in this price range is very important because you have three important decision points, 200-day moving average, 50-day moving average, and a big cluster of volume by price bars. If you look down here, you can see that accumulation distribution is starting to go up. You can see that on balance volume, is trying to settle down. And you can see that the RSI is uh, testing uh, oversold levels. Keep those things in mind uh, uh, as we go forward here, because these are going to be very important developments. Now, you want to look at those strong and weak sectors. And uh, remember, the best way to do, look at this is to look at all of them at once. And the best way I found is by using the uh, preset uh, stockcharts.com, uh, 3010 S&P select sector ETFs, uh, uh, candle glance view. And you can see everything here. You can scroll up and down and uh, pick the sectors where things are doing well. So step two, let's look at the stages of a perfect price chart. First, stage one is base formation. Uh, stage two is panic bottom. Uh, stage three is you want to see some short covering start after this panic bottom. Next stage, stage four, you want to see those buyers coming in. Then you want to see that breakout and you want to see a nice momentum run. So a perfect price chart has six stages. And remember that each one of them must be fulfilled. You got to check off that box in order for it to be the perfect chart. So without further ado, let's look at the perfect chart setup that we had in Apple in late 
2022. I'm just going to check off the boxes here. All right, first one is uh, it was forming a base. You can see that between 125 and 155, this stock was going up and down like crazy. You can also see there was a huge cluster, huge cluster of volume by price bars in the area. You can see that the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average were also present in that mix. And that tells you that that's a big, important price area. Now, moving further into this, you can see that the accumulation distribution, which is what tells us what the short sellers are doing, uh, was starting to bottom out. Short sellers are a lot less active in this area. That's a bullish development. And you can see that on balance volume is trying to base as well. It means that some buyers were starting to come in. So what happened here is as in the middle of this base right here at the end of 2023, you had a panic bottom. Everybody thought the Fed was going to raise interest rates to uh, 3 million on the Fed funds rate and so on and so forth. So we had the panic bottom. And right there, we saw the short covering begin in the accumulation distribution, uh, which was followed by buyers coming in on balance volume. So, so far, so good. And it came right along with the RSI setting up a nice bottom by hitting 30. So this perfect price chart, okay, so far, so good. Stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, all covered. Now, let's look for the breakout. What we saw here is Bollinger Bands starting to tighten, uh, and the trading uh, became very narrow right around the 200-day moving average, the 50-day moving average, and these two really big volume by price bars. OK, and uh, you want to check out a, a video I did uh, uh, last month on Bollinger Bands. You can learn a lot more about Bollinger Bands in that video. And two of these two videos actually go together. So anyways, you see the Bollinger Bands tighten. That means volatility is decreasing. Guess what? Here's your breakout. And incidentally, you see this big volume by price bar right here. Should have been resistance. Blew right by it. <coughs> Excuse me. Blew right by it. Very bullish development. So you had your breakout, and you had your momentum run. Okay, every stage fulfilled. Base formation, panic bottom, short covering, buyers coming in, breakout, momentum run. The perfect price chart. If you look for these six characteristics in all your price charts and you focus on the ones that have these uh, events going on that meet these criteria, the odds of you picking winners will rise significantly. So how do you trade this perfect chart? Well, first of all, you look for that point where the stock's about to break uh, break above the top of that base. You know, you want to make sure that support holds. And uh, then you look for those positive money flows. First, the shrinking of the Bollinger Bands, then the short covering accumulation distribution, then the on-balance volume, then you pull the trigger. Now, let's look at that in a little bit more detail. I've got this square here, okay? So the prelude stage to the breakout is this base formation right here. And we saw all these things, okay? We checked out all the boxes uh, uh, in the last slide. So what I wanna focus here is that period where things are about to go bust or, 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 or break out. Okay, and the decision point is right here. These two big bars, the 200-day moving average, the 50-day moving average. Remember, the more uh, big-time indicators that are clustered around one uh, price area, the more important that price area is. So the breakout or breakdown, if that's the way things would have happened, uh, is just hugely uh, uh, meaningful. Okay, and so what we see here is that as accumulation distribution uh was rising, meaning the short sellers are covering. You have buyers coming in. Uh, you finally hit that point where things just congeal and you have that breakout. So how do you manage this trade? Well, you let you got to let the stock tell you what it's doing. But this one was pretty, pretty nifty because the 20-day moving average turned out to be the buy the dip opportunity. And what happened here is when it broke below that 20-day and the 50-day, it was time to sell. Had you bought here, uh, somewhere around 150, 155, and sold somewhere around uh, 185. Um, that's a 30 point uh, gain. Uh, that's not uh, a bad uh, few months work. So let's put it all together. You want to trade with the market trend. You find stocks that are forming bases. 
look for that washout panic selling uh, as a prelude to uh, the money starting to move in. Uh, you want to monitor that support and that resistance. Uh, uh, the more indicators that you have around a certain price area, the better off you are. Analyze those money flows, accumulation, distribution, all balance volume. You won't pull that trigger. And you let the market define support. In the case of Apple, it was a 20-day moving average. If it's a 50-day moving average, that's great. If it's some kind of uh, uh, volume by price bar at some point, that's great. So you want to sell when that support is broken. Then you want to start looking for a base rebuilding and start the process over. That's what the smart money does, and that's what I recommend you do. That's all I've got for today. Joe Duarte from Joe Duarte in the moneyoptions.com author of the number one bestseller, Options Trading for Dummy. Please, if you like what you see here, uh, consider a trial subscription to my website, joeduarteinthemoneyoptions.com, and check out my Buy Me a Coffee page. Here's the link. And of course, I have a QQQ review, weekly real estate updates and special reports and in-depth analysis uh, and, and more new stuff all the time. The Buy Me a Coffee page lets me expand on what I talk about on the website. And remember, trading is uncertain. Be prepared.